Welcome back to Miniature Mash of Guys. I'd like to start today's episode by thanking everyone who's donated to my GoFundMe so far. Thank you, you keep the channel going. And for those of you who made video requests, I promise your videos are coming. Monks forego martial weapons and armor in order to forge themselves into living weapons and armor. For some races, this is a strange choice, as the only weapon a halfling can forge himself into is a water balloon. But Dragonborn with their claws, scales, and drive for self-reliance are a natural fit for the monk class. There's a connection between dragons and martial arts. Heck, Dragonborn Monk even sounds like a kick-ass Jet Li movie. There's some really fun synergy that happens with the Dragonborn resistances and the 7th level Monk ability evasion. A 7th level Red Dragonborn Monk with 20 dexterity has only 40% chance of taking damage from an equivalent level Wizard's fire spell. Any damage he does take will be reduced by half. A 7th level Wizard can cast 3 fireballs. When cast at a 7th level Dragonborn Monk, he's looking at doing somewhere in the neighborhood of 14 points of damage on average. A 7th level Human Fighter will take about 70 points of damage from the same 3 fireballs. And the majority of monster saving DCs will be lower, meaning a Dragonborn Monk owns monsters of their elemental type. At 14th level, the Monk ability Diamond Soul expands that protection to any saving throw, not just dexterity-based ones. Most saves against fire and electricity require a dexterity save, but you never know when your DM might throw something like this homebrewed lava worm at you. It's got a flaming tail sting that requires a constitution saving throw. There is one more thing that Dragonborn Monks can do, and that is own mobs like a boss. Turner off the Dragonborn Monk tracks down the orc bandits he was charged with dispatching, even though he is only third level and alone. He finds the filthy greenskins hiding in the tall, dry grass, ready to ambush the next unfortunate traveler. Turneroth sneaks up behind the orcs, revealing himself by breathing out a 15-foot cone of flame. Now this only catches one orc who fails his deck save and is cooked alive. But more importantly, it ignites the dry grass quickly, turning it into a bonfire. On their turn, the orcs stand up and charge through the fire to the Dragonborn. But when Turneroth attacks again, he uses flurry of blows and chooses to knock two orcs around back into the flames, where the additional fire damage finishes them off. When you do a Google search for a Dragonborn monk, the first thing that comes up is Hero Force. Forge, and that's not good. On their website, you can customize a figure and get yourself a perfectly bland little $20! Good lord, moving on. Reaper has one unarmed dragon man, and I guess it's a monk, but boy do I not care for this sculpt. It's sort of a bulky guy who looks more like a pit fighter than the light lean form that tends to typify a martial artist. And looking through their line, they do have a few other dragon men that sort of might work, but all of them run about six bucks a piece. Here's where the Draconum race from Mage Knight comes into play. Now, not all of them make good Dragonborn, just the youngest form of Draconum known as the Whelp. I have two of them here, but there are other Whelp models out there. Now, I'm not telling you to try it and hunt down these specific miniatures. It'll end up costing you as much or more than the equivalent Reaper miniature. What I am saying is try to keep an eye out for Mage Knight lots with Whelps in them. They not only make great Dragonborn monks, but also Dragonborn sorcerers. We're going to start by putting our Mage Knights into a vice and knocking them off their special base with the chisel. Rubber mallet and chisel and a vice is the best way to get these mage knight figures off their bases. Then I'm going to drop them into some acetone, revealing what I like to call opportunity yellow underneath. I am going to chop off their chain. I'm going to use Lily 6000 on their feet and then stick them onto a penny. After that, I'm going to take some watered down igloo. I'm going to smear that on the penny using a cheap cheap vinyl brush, get a nice even coat on there. And after that I'm gonna dump some craft sand on them. Let that sit for at least an hour. Probably best to let it sit for four to six hours, maybe even overnight. Once that sand and glue are set, I'm gonna take it outside and Hit it with some black primer. And we're gonna start applying a brown base coat to both colors. Now I'm making a red and a gold. I'm just gonna add thin layer after thin layer of paint, starting with the lowest surfaces and working my way to the top. When it's all finished, I hit it with a glossy varnish to sort of seal in my paintwork and also to make them look a little slimy. Uh, overall, I'm very happy with the results. I think they came out pretty good. What's not showing up here on camera is actually how metallic the golden Dragonborn actually is. And my girlfriend says the gold one looks like Crow T. Robot if he were played by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Anyway guys, thanks for watching as always. If you'd like to come visit us on Facebook, you can. You can see more photos of this project. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider donating to my GoFundMe campaign. The link's in the description below. 
please like and subscribe. Thank you.